Alrighty guys, welcome back. Uh, it's been a while since we've done one of these, but we're back with Crushing Tins. Uh, you're with Darson Klotz and we've got Luke from Fields Brewery. It's take two. How are we, mate? Good, mate. How are you? Yeah, good, thank you. Yeah, so we fucked up again. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you're probably used to it by now, but audio wasn't recording yet again. But um, it's good to be back, back at the Cactin again. We're um, yeah, doing a bit more of a serious chat today. Um, the last few weeks we've been getting up to all sorts for the podcast, but yeah, we want to take it back again to the stuff we're sort of doing at the start and learn a little bit about fields and the brewing industry yeah definitely so um yeah sorry to go over it again but just a um, <laughs> little bit about yourself and how you sort of got into the uh, the beer industry no, mate. You're right, mate. thanks again for having us um well yeah mate look uh i, I work for myself and I, I do property development so um in a previous life I, I worked for mickey d's so i was um sourcing their sites and um you get a discount there did you yeah you do you do um i've probably contributed to everyone's late night snack on the way home after <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> drinking yeah. piss with you blokes so, um, <laughs> no, yeah, so look it, it was an excellent place to work but um you know as i say to everyone even though i look 40 i'm only 33 so um i'm <laughs> so looking like 13 <laughs> like me <laughs> yeah. um need to go have it a bit of a crack and um you know why you can i suppose so uh yeah doing my own developments work for myself so um, it's great in that sense that um, I've got that time and, and, and give it a bit of a go, but it also gives me that opportunity, um, again, to, to follow the beer path and, and yeah. have that. You know, um, It allows me to do my development stuff uh, for most of the day and then talk to people about beer at night time, um, which is yeah. enjoyable. Yeah, so, um, it is fun. And, uh, yeah, meet blokes like you. So, no, it's... Um, so it's, it's not really that good, good then. <laughs> 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 I love it. Um, now... Mate, we were saying before, uh, so at the moment you're doing a bit of gypsy brewing with a mate of yours who runs Brendale. So um, how's that sort of experience yeah, been? Yeah, mate, look, it's been really good. Um, you know, as I said, this is my first foray into it and, yeah. you know, um, it's it's taken about six months of planning to get to this stage. But look, as most of you blokes know, um, it probably costs about a million bucks to set up um, a brewery yeah. um, and it's it's big, big expense and look you know this isn't my bread and butter yet um, yeah. you know if I can make a career out of selling beer um, absolutely love to but um, it was an opportunity to get into the market um, both from a um, you know a price point to, to gypsy brew you don't have those setup costs yeah. Yeah. Um, I was clear with what I wanted to achieve with the beer so that was really helpful and and as you say um, I went to uni with Ryan he's a great bloke and um, him and his team have been incredibly helpful over there they they produce an exceptional um, product number one and yeah. they've been exceptionally helpful in helping us um, get to the point where we are of, of developing further the rep the recipes and the intent and um you know the positives and negatives and challenges that they've experienced as well so um they've been incredibly helpful as you say we we um we did our first batch there and um no doubt we'll use them again in the future but um it, it, just the the learnings that we got i want to um make sure that i i touch base with as many people in brisbane as i can to to gypsy brew and contract brew wherever possible yeah. um, the little learnings that you pick up along the way are invaluable to someone like me who who wants longevity out of the business and and yeah. longevity out of the industry so um learning from the best almost I I exactly everyone's got different ways and di different approaches to it so um you'd be foolish not to um, engage with as many people as you want and um, I know we were talking about this in take one of it before um, <laughs> we weren't recorded but um, I've just found um, the industry being the craft beer industry so welcoming um, and yeah. supportive you know though um, you know you're coming in and effectively um, you're impacting the market share again with another yeah. brewery coming along Except before cannibalizing their, their market basically C correct yeah. and I was expecting a you know um, not the greatest um, reception to it, to be honest. Not an, you know, not another brewery coming in, but mm. everyone's just been so supportive. And um, you know, I don't just think it's the COVID element. Um, I think everyone's just genuinely yeah. like that. And um, you know, the contacts and and um, th the actual willingness of people they they want to see you succeed. So mm, yeah. um, it's an amazing industry to actually witness that firsthand and and really appreciate it today. Something I always remember from. Um Back in November, or it was end of November, start of December, we went out to Helios Brewing, and I had a chat with Charlie out there, their brewer, and 
he said to us, like, he's been all over the place from WA, a couple other joints, but he said Queensland's one of the best uh, sectors for the craft beer industry. And he said, you know, everyone's so supportive of each other. And at the time, I was thinking, oh, yeah, sweet. You, people just say that. But after actually speaking to, you know, like, people like yourself, like, other breweries, it's crazy to see how everyone gets around yeah, each other. It, like actually, even just people getting around other. us, like you being here tonight. We, we we pretty much say it every time we get someone on. But speaking to people like Dan Norris from Black mm. Ops and stuff, and everyone's just so willing to jump on and have a chat. So it's it's yeah. awesome. It's been a lot of fun as well. Yeah, definitely. It's pretty awesome. Yeah, exactly. It's always good talking about beer. Like, yeah. there's nothing better. Especially really. for us, like as you said, <laughs> it's, it's good for you to be contract brewing and going learning from all the best but we well i know me i know absolutely fuck all about beer <laughs> so, <laughs> every time we talk to someone i learn something new i remember when we figured out like what makes a beer sour i was like yeah that was so cool yeah exactly such a such an awesome little moment yeah um now we briefly touched on it before didn't really get too much into it but um a little bit of the, the background on um sort of your thinking going into fields so like a little bit about the the branding that sort of stuff yeah sure like uh w- we talked about it but um you know I absolutely respect and love the the beer industry, but um, as we discussed, sort of, I, I found the past five years, it's been awesome to see everyone come out and try new things and all that mm. sort of stuff. But it's almost come to the point, in my opinion, where it's almost gone a little bit too far. Um, yeah. You know, I think people are wanting to go back um, and just get the quality beer right. Mm, I yeah. think. Um, you know, it's been great to see everyone experiment and, um, you know, I walk into a bottle shop, we walk into BWS and Dan's and you'll, you, you could never drink the same beer again for the rest of your life because there's that many varieties and that's yeah. awesome. Um, that's fantastic and the the design and everything is cool and that's part of the experience. You want to go, yeah. you walk along and you see something cool and go, that'll taste unreal because look at the can. But yeah. um, I suppose the design about fields is, is just taking it back and, and focusing on the beer, not necessarily um, the can design. We're, yeah. we're looking for something, um, you know, you'll never get anything too outrageous from us. Um, that's probably um where i'm approaching it from rightly yeah. or wrongly maybe everyone wants the sours and maybe everyone wants the giraffe tongue and um <laughs> yeah. you know rhubarb nine percent beers yeah. um but that's probably not where i'm approaching it i'm just seeing a, an opportunity and we want longevity um we want to get on the pubs and clubs you know yeah. i want to come back and talk to you guys in a couple of years and say that you know yeah it's we're on tap downstairs it, we're drinking it, it instead it, of gold yeah, yeah. It, exactly right like that that's um unashamedly where i'm approaching it um mm. is that I, I i want it to be um we talk about it and it's the wrong word but it, it's not simple the beer is not simple we want it to be fantastic um and we think we've we've developed that again through brendale's um initial guidance in helping us get there but yeah. and those blokes win a bunch of um awards and he's got some really good people in there so yeah we think the foundation is great from that point of view mm. um but yeah look th- that that's the premise behind it will um over time so our, our next launch and happy for you guys to breaking news if you exclusive want to, first exclusive yeah, first exactly. exclusive this is exciting <laughs> so um our next launch will be on june 30 where we'll do um we'll extend the range to uh, a porter and oh, a beautiful. um and oh, an ipa so nice. i think a porter is always an obvious one during winter yep. um, yeah we'll extend it there um, and then an IPA. I think there's an expectation as a craft beer, regardless of what I've yeah. just said, there's an expectation of, you know, giving a bit of oomph. So yeah. um, the IPA, I think, is 5.7 ABV, um, you know, and it's a bit of fun and, yeah. and you get to experiment a little bit more. Um, the pale and lager has gone exceptionally well for us. We've actually um, retail sold out of the pale. Um, Beautiful. The bottle shops that we're on, we're on four at the moment. Um, there's a bit of news coming on that, which I can't um, disclose yet, yet yeah. with, with a bit of growth. But um, That's awesome news. Th- th- We've already got one exclusive, so can't, yeah, 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 can't yeah, be too great. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but yeah, look, th- they've um, all four of them have actually reordered their second round, so Beautiful. it's been sold out um, really quickly, and we're sort of giving them 10 cartons at a time. So at a, at a craft brewer level, um, at a, and again, um, we canned on the 11th of May, I think it was, so yeah. to be, well, it's literally June 11th, yeah, to, so be, 11th to be in that tomorrow, position, I think. Yeah. you know, it's sold two, out, 240 cartons, like it's, that's it's awesome, that's insane. Us, I think so. as well, um, like we, we did talk about that before, and I didn't think of this, but I think, like I think all those weird, ex- and like the weird sours and experimental beers and stuff definitely have their place, but I honestly think it's a different occasion, um, mm. like we were saying before, where 
coming live from the Caxon. Like we've been doing a fair bit of stuff here, and every time we come here, we drink four X gold. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. like I, I love drinking sours and trying weird beers, but you've got to have your staple. Like you need that something in the fridge. Definitely, that's just like. Make yeah, you're 100 percent right, and and that's what we wanna we wanna be those those guys. The staple. That, um, yeah, it, and we think that there's an opportunity to do it. Um, it, it. We were talking about it before, but you know, not to get into the numbers too much or anything like that, and and make it too heavy. But if you look at you know Asahi buying out CUB and all that sort of stuff, yeah. um, you know, the the Australian beer, the, there's an opportunity there. We've yeah. got to blast it across the front of our can to to. Um, take advantage of that I suppose and be yeah. proud of it but yeah. um, to get a to get a good quality beer hopefully um, consistently on, on pubs and clubs um, and taps everywhere is probably the focus rather than the Dan Murphy's um, of the world where you're just focusing on that package product number one um, it's fucking expensive to yeah. do it that way and yeah. the margins are really tight but number two um, you know yeah, to get longevity to touch um, I suppose most amount of customers and and um people is to get it on um the pubs and clubs yeah and taps, definitely so. and i don't want to bang on about too much but like we've been running this group and page and stuff since what november yeah and we've had our fair share of weird beers but <laughs> it's just like I'd, I'd never go to a bottle and buy a carton of some sour like i buy a single can yeah. and like every time we get together to watch a footy or something we're having more than two or three beers everyone's yeah. drinking a lager or a pale ale at four X or I was gonna say we actually we went when uh, the footy season re kicked off what two weeks ago now we went to a mate's place and um there's a fair amount of boys there and they're like, Oh, what weird shit have you guys brought? And I was like, Oh bloke in a bar lager. Yeah, like I'd, it's I'd just a staple. Dry, <laughs> yeah, we're just drinking something <laughs> staple and you know, like I'm I've sort of been realising recently, like I much prefer like I enjoy all the exotic sort of beers but I just want something I can just sit on and just keep charging throughout the day Mate, slash night and, and that's what the feedback is from the pubs and clubs is you're turning up with a 6% beer to try and put on the you know not too many yeah. people come into the clubs or the pubs to have one schooner and leave no exactly <laughs> exactly and, and they don't want that you get too shit faced off yeah. it you're bloated you yeah. don't want to yeah. order a bowl of chips yeah and, you and can't the see the publicans yeah <laughs> exactly the publicans <laughs> you know, don't make as much money out of it. So that it, it is important to be as part of the craft beer industry alive mm -hmm. to those things as well to get that longevity, which is what we are, you know, unashamedly um, trying to aim for, I suppose. So whether we're successful or not, and, you know, maybe everyone does want the batshit crazy beers, yeah. um, you know, and, and we'll fall over in that respect. But, um, you know, we'd like to think that there's a good balance. But, um, yeah, that's the intention. I think even you look at some of the, like, I don't know, like, don't have that much experience with some of the bigger names like Bolter and Black Ops mm. and stuff. Their core cool ranges are like same thing: lager, yeah. pale ale, IPA. Yeah. Like yeah, exactly. Look, um, there'll always be an element of um, of our expect uh, experimentation. So yeah. um, we'll absolutely do that, but yeah. it'll be one once a year is probably um, yeah. the intention and limited release or something. Yeah, exactly. We'll yeah. we'll do probably a black can with white writing. Yeah, sort of yeah, thing. right. Um, you know, so you know that change it up uh, what it is. Yeah. yeah. So um, you know, we'll call it. So we're using as part of the marketing um, instead of having our ugly heads all over the um, like us. website <laughs> with the <laughs> website yeah um, I didn't think you were filming so that's the only reason why I said I was coming but um, we, yeah we've got a, a Bernese Mountain Dogs called Arthur so he's Beautiful. sort of the the face of it and you can hide behind that so yeah. The, yeah. the special releases will be the Arthur Brew or Arthur yeah. Ale and Left of Fields exactly so yeah mate <laughs> you can use that if you want <laughs> mate, there's, a, there's been a few um recommendations for ciders <laughs> as well but i won't um go into that so um but yeah look um i, I think where we'll end up is probably um six beers um yep. and then we'll have a cider and a um ginger beer probably is where we'll go out so ginger beer would be an awesome one there's not many not many out there but some of them that are out there are fantastic the, the, yeah like, the brookvale union like yeah. my lovely wife um doesn't drink a lot but she belts them down yeah. and makes me happy and, <laughs> yeah um you know it, it justifies me having a few on the weekend yeah. as well so <laughs> yeah, um, definitely that they've done it really well and and yeah the uh the pubs and clubs again um certainly see an opportunity for that so hopefully we yeah. can fill that as well i feel like that's um like you keep going back to you know the pubs and clubs like it's really good you've done your research on that sort of thing because 
I know, like, you go to most popular hotels, like the big chain hotels who are with, they might have a contract with CUB or um, Castlemaine, those sort of guys. You see they have one or two taps available um, for those sort of craft beers, but majority of the time it's not a very high percentage beer. Yep. Um, so, yeah, like, massive credit to being able to identify that. That's, uh, I think I said in my review the other night uh, of the lager, um, I really enjoyed that one because it's just, it's got a really good taste to it. I wouldn't say it's simple, but it's it's like um, I likened it to Forex in the way that you could session on it. Yeah, exactly. And the, like at the end of the day, if if that's what a club wants, like a pub and a club, you'd be crazy not to do it. So no, yeah, exactly. Yeah, such yeah. a such a good idea. If you're stuffing around too much for it with the lager, you're probably um, not off to the greatest yeah. start, in my opinion. So yeah. Yeah. Um, it's it's a bit of a traditionalist um, one that you got to get right. So. Yeah, 100%. yeah, definitely. Now, with your beers as well, um, did you have much input into like the recipes and that sort of stuff? Like, yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, look, uh, again, um, I'd be lying if there wasn't a foundational element applied to it from what Brendale have done. Yeah. Um, you know, again, I don't want to hype on about those guys, but it's it's true to our story of, of yeah. who we are is um, uh, what many people don't probably know and maybe I'll embarrass him is, is Ryan from Brendale mm. is an incredibly smart guy, incredibly smart guy. We yeah. went to uni together and he topped it and we did property economics of all things. So, um, you know, when we linked up again in 10 years' time and he you know, he'd started a brewery. He's like, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah. Like, you know, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. So many questions. I just, I just <laughs> yeah. don't understand yeah. it. But um, his attention to detail, um, his analysis of things, his procedure, the people and team that he's got around him, like, um, you know, uh, I, you can't under, underrate that. Um, yeah. And so he provided an exceptional foundation for that. And it really was a lessons learnt thing. If he he's obviously got an established line, if you like, um, he's yeah. got a recipe and he's got a product already. And it was more building off. Um, if he could do things differently, he'd do this, mm. and we took that on board. Mm. Yeah, um, true. So, so good um, to be able to have those learnings to someone who's done exactly yeah, what you've done and like made all the mistakes and exactly. So um, he was one of them. Um, you know, the guys at Ballistic who uh, uh, have been helpful as well and as it, there's been a few other guys who have influenced it along the way um but yeah it's it's um a lot of trial and error um, yeah, definitely. Which, which isn't a bad thing um <laughs> so you know you've enjoyed um sampling in it and, and doing doing it many have another one just to be sure yeah, <laughs> many times but look um may like anything you're never going to make everyone happy yeah but, um you know you're never going to uh, get it a hundred percent but um, I've got some great mates around me who um, would have said, hey, Luke, that was absolutely dog shit. shit. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I needed them to say that. Yeah. So um, I, don't ma I don't benefit from this if people are blowing smoke up my ass and saying, yeah, oh, you know, yeah, that tastes really good and then spitting it into a pot plant. Yeah, exactly so, right, yeah. Um, yeah, look, that, that was the benefit of having that um, critical feedback, which we listened to. Um, and, you know... Um, it certainly was a different way in which we launched as well. So prior to, to this, um, again, I'll talk about the industry in which I've come from property and, you know, you'll never meet a larger group of pissed blokes um, <laughs> and, and women, I should say, yeah. um, than in the property industry. So, um, <laughs> you know, that was always ingrained in it. But um, starting it, there was a relationship with pubs and clubs and I keep talking here about it, that yep. that was going to be the initial launch and that was going to be the target. Um, yep. And pre-COVID, we had about 30 venues lined up who were willing to, to take kegs. Yeah. Yep. And, and, it, and it was, mate, it was literally, hey, um, I'm doing this and I'm having a bit of go. Can you support us? Yeah, we'll, we'll put it on. And again, yep. um, that's the industry is the blokes having a go. Uh, again, if you come in to do the sales pitch, it's incredibly fucking hard if you have no relationship. Mm. Yeah. Um, you know, here comes, I think the Batuta Advocate did an awesome article where it was like, oh, not, not another um, craft beer pitch from some <laughs> yeah. So, um, <laughs> it was really good from that point of view and very accurate. But um, again, we had that that sort of platform to launch and, and we'll revisit that Um you know, so, over the next six months, yeah. exactly, and, and not yeah. push it. Those blokes have done it really hard. Um, we've just got on back on to our first tap um, 
at the Teddo Bar at Everton Park. So oh, yeah. Tim nice. Johnson um, runs Corbett and Claude and um, Commuter and Cant- Cantina in the Teddo Bar. And um, yeah. he's actually ex Maccas as well. And I got introduced to him. So he's yeah. given us a chance. And wherever. That's awesome. We're really thankful of that because you, you need to start somewhere effectively. Someone so, said, yeah. it was Josh Ryan, who I caught up with, one of our mates was uh, has been living in the UK for a few years and he is back at the moment. And I had lunch with him last week last Friday yeah. and he said that Teddo roof bar goes off so I might have to go and have a few beers oh, it's, ex- it's yeah. Yeah. excellent it's, he's done it really well so yeah. yeah he's a good operator Tim across the road from Wild Stomping Ground at Grilled yeah, as well yeah it's also yeah. Like pretty close to my house as well probably could stumble on stumble home yeah, yeah via Maccas <laughs> yeah. we're Always. plugging everyone right? <laughs> yeah there's a royalty check yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we've got to get a few more reads in before the end so yeah, yeah definitely um, alrighty so obviously I've got here how's COVID affected the launch. So, um, yeah, pretty much you are looking to get into a couple of venues, that sort of stuff. But we're on the way up there. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, mate. Like like I said, it's it's no more um, than yeah. We we literally had thirty um, yeah. thirty venues, um, and the benefit of that though that there was probably only five stakeholders, so yeah. m- multiple yeah. pub operators who yeah. were. You know, stakeholder management is so key. Um, do they trust me to, to deliver their beer on time? Do mm, they trust yeah. me that um, I'll give them the product that they expect um, that will cold, come cold and fresh and all that sort of stuff? And if you can do that, but getting the volume of 30 venues, well, yeah. that's that's a significant amount to, to kick things off with, yeah, I suppose. Definitely. So, um, yeah, look, that, that took a back seat. But um, the one thing I, I'd say and... Um, you know uh, that I found is the the to set me up um, with fields today to have a bit of a go. It's cost me fifteen hundred bucks. Yeah, it's crazy. So yeah, uh, fifteen hundred dollars might sound like a lot of money, but in the scheme of things, when you consider it's a million bucks to yeah, start a brewery. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Like so, um, we decided to launch with the cans and everything, and and you know with delayed invoice payments and all that sort of stuff, and you're selling it at the same time. It, it yeah. really yeah. balances out. So. Um, we launched with the cans to get the brand out there and, and that's been really successful and in a funny way I'm really glad that we've done that that people yeah. will be able to see the can and, and sort of touch and feel it as opposed to getting a drink off the the tap head but um, I was just going to say you know if you if your heart desires to go and have a bit of a crack um, you know it, it's not that out of reach um, from a, a financial yeah. position mm-hmm. there's ways around it um, you know and um, if you're really wanting to do that through that contract brewing and gypsy brewing, it's an interesting way. If, if like me, you want to have a bit of a go, you know, yeah. if, mate, if it doesn't work, well, fuck. 1500 bucks I've spent. Yeah, correct. Yeah. I've got some nice jumpers out of it. Yeah, shirt, exactly. A couple of shirts and... Yeah. Um, a few nice beers as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And, and away you go. But um, I just... I thought that was relevant in the sense that it's not that unattainable to um, yeah. have a bit of a Maybe dig and, do it. and see how you go. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. Yeah. Oh, you you sold out of your so shirts step in one. minutes, yeah. so yeah. you obviously got a market out there. Yeah, yeah that would be great. Um, have you? Did you have much experience with home brewing or anything beforehand? or, or, Mate, a double I, or? I didn't, but um, where my uncle, um, he actually uh, is incredibly successful um, in it, in the home brewing, so... Yeah. Um, I spoke to him this afternoon um, just to sort of get an understanding and he um, has won a number of awards from the QABC which is the Queensland Amateur Brewing Championships yeah, and right. um, it happens out at Stanthorpe and it's quite a big deal and, and a huge yeah. scene around there and um, look he's been doing that for 20 years and he's incredibly passionate about it and yeah. he knows his shit back to front Um up and down and in between so um and he's he won he wins sorry a bunch of awards and all that sort of stuff like he's very successful so yeah i've really enjoyed watching him and you hear about him and all that sort of stuff um and, and you you see the recognition that he get and he's been in, invited now to be a judge of it all and so mm. he's built it off that so family gatherings and all that sort of stuff he'd bring you the brown bottle yeah. and go look what i've just yeah. brewed yeah. and you're like holy shit that's amazing yeah. um you know and that's probably where the interest came from but yeah. um and again that that's where i grew up on and, and i must say that is where it all started um you know i was i was put off beer for a long time when you'd get your old boy come home and he'd he'd burp on the couch yeah. and he'd smell the 4x yeah. or the vv yeah. come across so yeah. i think we all went through that but Definitely. um 
as you grow up, you <laughs> you want to fall um, back in love. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, and then obviously with um, Ryan's leap at Brendale, that really yeah. sparked the interest and in, um, seeing what he did there. Yeah, for sure. It's funny you mentioned the uh, the uh, burping stuff. So my old man used to work for CUB for years, and I really take it for I took it for granted back then. Um, I think he left when I was fourteen, so a bit oh, over ten years ago. We really could have capitalized on that. Mate, we're going to capitalize. <laughs> he used part of their payment um, every Friday when you walk out, you get a free carton of beer. So he didn't pay for a carton for fourteen, fifteen years, and. Once I turned 18, I was like, geez, like I've really missed out on a great exactly. opportunity here. It's funny, that, it's only like 50 bucks to buy a card, but like that's worth so much more than 50 bucks. Exactly, yeah, exactly. <laughs> nah, it's crazy stuff. Um, alrighty, well, good here as well. A couple of questions we ask everyone. Um, so outside of your own beers at the moment, what are your top five favourite beers of all time? Yeah, of all time. Um, so... Single fin, yeah. Yeah. Um, I've got to say, so um, the Rugby World Cup was on when I had my uh, first daughter, and um, it'd be two o'clock in the morning. We'd be right watching the Rugby World Cup, and I'd be having a beer while my <laughs> lovely wife was who's been up all night. So I'd be having a beer watching the Rugby World Cup and drinking this, and I thought, Jesus, this is a good beer. <laughs> <laughs> I was fucking tired, and maybe it was something to do with that, but. Um, Oh, yeah, I reckon that's a, an exceptional beer. Um, yep. I love the Colonial Pale Ale. So yeah. just, yep. just again, the experience, you know, it's just... Ripping the lid off. Ripping the lid off. Yeah. Um, really clever, just the yep. point of difference and um, all that sort of stuff. I'm going to say maybe it um, offends everyone, but I love Guinness. I love I lo- Guinness. I no, I love, I love Guinness. Guinness. Love Guinness. You know, in the... Did you go to the UK or something to introduce it? I did, um, but uh, my... Uh, parents-in-law actually introduced me to it. Um, I, I, it's exceptional over there, but the cans here are, are still Good. great. Yeah. Um, yeah. I always find it's a leveler for me. If you, you know, in my younger years, I suppose, if you're at the Caxton getting shit-faced, yeah. and you're 10 beers deep. Yeah. Yeah. I just, having a Guinness, you yeah. know, it just settles you down and, yeah. and it tastes excellent. It's Especially when it's cold, there's yeah. nothing better. But yeah. I, the boys I was talking about before that were back from the UK, that's they got me onto it. I was over there. Uh, not Christmas last year, the year before, and um, we're at some. It was like a backpackers hostel pub, mm. and I was like, n- like, never heard of any of the beers, and I was like, oh, I have to get a Foster's. Yeah, yeah. And then one of them's like, just ha- get a Guinness. And I was like, no way. They're like, you'll have your first one, you won't like it, but after your second one, and I, I yeah. drank it every day for about five weeks straight. Mate, well, in the in the GFC, I moved to London um, for about six months, and mm. I remember walking into a pub. And the first beer that I saw, without a word of a lie, they had Forex on tap. Really? Yeah. Oh, Holy oh, shit. Fuck, I've flown all this way <laughs> yeah. over here. And I've just seen Forex on tap. Like, Jesus. That's so and, funny. And yeah, they offer you Fosters. And you're yeah. just like, mate, I couldn't no, tell you yeah. where it is in Brisbane. Yeah, or, exactly. Or Australia, yeah. You know, to no. pick it up. So, um, But there's a there's a beer called um, a Longboard Pale Ale. And mm. I had it about three years ago, four years ago when I was working um, and down in Sydney and it was honestly, I had about six and it was the best beer that I've had um, yeah. for a while um, and I don't think that they're around anymore. I did try and Google them before coming here and yeah. the logo is still there but um, they them. were an exceptional beer. Like, And I asked him, can you ship it up to Brisbane? And he's like, oh no, not really. It was just, maybe it was too boutique. We're in North Sydney so it wasn't like you're in down an alley yeah, drinking yeah, yeah. out of a garage or yeah, anything it yeah. was it was on a restaurant but that was an exceptional beer um and look you can't take the the queensland bogan out of me but i love a forex as well oh, so i love that um, 100%. you know yeah it's it's a pretty go-to option the yeah. yeah to mango so yeah 100 yeah. percent, definitely so i'm gonna give out the gold can as well just <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, exactly oh, it's so get good. excited just thinking about it <laughs> yeah love that um alrighty. so what about favorite place to have a beer do you have like a um, mate, I reckon probably a surf club. Oh, yeah, hundred percent. I literally said this to that. someone at work today. Yeah, I reckon a surf club, whether with your family or with your mates or whatever, it's just a good environment. You know, being Definitely. by the the water and all that sort of stuff. So, um, I reckon the surf clubs. Um, Any surf club in particular? Um, oh, 
my old boy's a member of Maroochydore, so oh, I'll yeah, probably nice. mention that. It's a great, um, that is a great surf club. In the, um, in the surf boats <laughs> up plug. there. But, uh, yeah, yeah. Mate, <laughs> exactly. If you can put us on tap, that'd be great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, look, um, you know, surf clubs or bowls clubs or, yeah. you know, yeah. just um, that Sunday afternoon sort of feel or Saturday Arvo. Yeah. Um, oh, the best place I've ever had a beer in my life, ever, Um my wife's from Papua New Guinea or um, her mum's from there and her dad's Australian and we, we yeah. went over there and her mum comes from a place that's little, literally in the middle of nowhere. It takes you four days to get there without a word of a lie and they live in a village in the base of a volcano. Heck and we went over there with a family, um, my brother-in-law and sister-in-law and their kids and we went over there and we bought a carton of SP um, in a place called Kimbe and then took it with us. 200 kilometers in a boat and anyway <laughs> you know, it's, it's 35 degrees yeah. up there and 100 percent humidity but um the water comes down off a volcano and it's ice cold but and it's a flowing river so we we left the beer in there um and uh you know i'm not gonna lie it wasn't fucking ice cold when you drank it but it yeah, was cold enough, cold enough um, yeah I think we paid 120 bucks a strain for this thing that, <laughs> of SP beer, but that's Jeez. that's the way to do it over yeah, there because you're it. in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. But um, yeah, I had a beer sitting in PNG, base of a volcano. At night time, you looked up and the um, like the the clouds are red because it's an active yeah. volcano, and you're just sitting there going, "This is pretty cool." That's that unreal. So yeah, that's, that's probably so the, cool. Awesome. That's probably the best, the most unique experience that I've had. Um, yeah, that's so uh, having a beer. So bit rough on the price but yeah. that's alright it's like you can get there's a uh, there's a fellow actually from the group um, who runs the uh, the pig athletic club he's um, he's currently stranded isn't currently he? stranded in PNG and he put up a review the other night I forgot what he was drinking but it's like oh, yeah. 80 or 90 bucks Australian, Australian a card yeah, right. I think and he said he's it been tasted like through. razor blades I think yeah, he said yeah, that'd be about right <laughs> look SB dominates the market up yeah, there and, yeah. and what not but Maybe Fields will be that um, competitive yeah, advantage maybe. up there. So. there. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and do you have a dream person who you want to do a collab beer with? Or to work with, I suppose? Um, oh, look, as generic as it sounds, you, you can't ignore what the guys at Stone and Wood have done. Yeah. Um, you yeah. know, in a shorter period of time to grow how they've done, to see the operation of it. You know, I'm not saying... Um, and by no offence, whether their beer is the best or not, but mm. um, to understand them and pick their brain a bit more is yeah. obviously an, a really obvious answer. Um, mate, I, I'd go back to my um, my longboard mate um, yeah. in Sydney. Like it, again, yeah. it really made an impact to that beer. Whether it was the right time of the day or whatever, yeah. I'm not sure. But um, you know, the uniqueness of it, and the easy drinking of it, that'd be great to to link up with. But um, look, uh, I I ultimately. Um, you know, as boring as the sound is, I'd love to do just um, something with my uncle as well. So go yeah, on to that. So um, you know, he's um, they've got German heritage, and um, you know, he, he loves working with rye and doing all this um, stuff. And he may be the right guy that we do the Arthur Brew and the special yeah, was, one. Yeah. But you know, to give him an opportunity as well yeah, to definitely. work together and commercialize it, for lack of a better term. Yeah. Um, I'd really enjoy that working with him um, and doing that. So hopefully we can keep that goal as yeah, well. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Um, in the that future. would be so sick. Has he had much of a chance to get into breweries before, or um, or just sort of been doing it at home? I think he's just wanted to do it from home. I think yeah. you know he's got a full time job. Um, yeah. You know my he's got my auntie as well and all that sort of stuff. And I, I think it's just too much of a yeah a, a, a burden. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know again. Um, it's not the the return that you can leave your job for thirty years yeah, exactly. um, to yeah. go and have a bit of a go and all that sort of stuff. So, I think he he can do it at home where he he's enjoys enjoying it. it. Yeah. yeah, and and the people that he meets, he actually he comes in here with the brew club, and I think he's meet, meeting tonight actually. So, um, mm. you know, he gets enough of a kick out of that, and and he and he's winning a lot of awards. So, I think that's enough for him. And yeah, definitely. Um, you know, maybe you can pass the baton to me and we'll see what we can make of it and go from there. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Yeah, that would be so sick. Yeah. Well, um, mate, have you got nothing else to... I was going to say, where can people... I know they're sold out at the moment, but where can people buy your beers? So we're on, um, at the moment, you can buy it online. So we'll, uh, with this batch, if you're in Greater Brisbane, we'll deliver it to you for free. Um, so um, if you go on fieldsbrewing.co is the website, um, we'll do that. 
but at the moment they're at Harry Brown's at the EH. Yep. Harry Brown's at Brackenridge. Um, the Beer Mart at Bowen Hills. Um, and also the Stafford Liquor Legends. Yep. So, um, yeah, look, we'll keep the wholesale supply of those blokes and we'll do a, a new... Um, a new run, as I said, um, of all four beers um, on June 30 and continue to build off that throughout the year. So, yeah, there'll be, there'll be plenty to go around. Cool. Perfect. That'd be so good. I was yeah. going to say, we've done enough plugs tonight, so yeah. by yourself. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That'd be fun. I should have let you go. <laughs> yeah. No, nah, perfect. Well, mate, thanks for coming on. No I worries. really enjoyed this chat. So, onwards and upwards from here, like, all the best with, um, yeah, getting the beers out there and very keen for this next launch with your uh, next two beers no, I appreciate as well. it, Matt. I, you know, any exposure we obviously welcome, so yeah. I appreciate what you guys well, do. The, and the thing is that we've always sort of been, from the start, like, we if a beer's shit, we we hose it in the group. And we've both yeah. tried your beers that you sent through and they're fucking awesome beers. Yeah. So definitely, if you're listening, get around yeah. them and have a crack. Yeah, definitely. Um, and majority of you guys will be listening if it's the boys. Um, yeah head down to Stafford Tab for sure because yeah. it's so close to you so no excuses <laughs> awesome thanks yeah. guys appreciate it no, thank you so much. so much cheers <laughs>